Hi everybody, my name is Caden. I'm Jaden. I'm Nicole. I'm Eli. And I'm Jason. And we are the Ahula Tour YouTube channel. And it is a Shabbat, everybody. How are you guys doing out there? Is everybody good? We yeah, are good. we are good. Everyone who's in the chat room, all what? 11 we of you guys? 11 people. 11 of you guys. That is 11 awesome people that are out there. And thank you guys very, 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 very much for joining in on this. And it is a day of celebration. It is a feast day. What does it mean to be a feast day, Eli? How, it, how can this be a feast day? It's the Shabbat. What does that mean? We are supposed to rest and read our Bibles, and it's a day with Yah. It's a day with Yah. And what does that mean? Do we cook? Do we cling? Do we do any of this stuff? No, no. we do that days prior. We do that to our, on the, the preparation day, the sixth day. Today is the seventh day, so we do none of that. Well, we should do that all yesterday. Absolutely. All right, so let's begin with a couple of, actually, let's begin with prayer. Let's start with that, and then we're going to do some praise and worship real quick. Precious Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for joining us together in this little tiny ecclesia. We thank you for being with us. Father, we thank you for your son, Yahusha. We thank you for your Torah. Father, I ask that you will help us to write this on our hearts, minds, and souls today, that we will embed this into our lives, that we will make this part of our lives. And Father, that your ways will be our ways, and we will do nothing but what you want us to do. Father, your ways are beautiful. Your creation is beautiful. Everything you have designed is beautiful. And Father, we are your people coming out of captivity. We are asking you to be our Elohim. You have told us, you have given us in your word that you would be our Elohim and we will be your people. Father, we ask that you will keep us, guide us, keep us where you want us to be. And Father, we thank you for everything. Again, we thank you for your son, Yahusha, and we thank you for your Torah. We ask this all in the name of Yahusha. Amen. All right, everybody. Praise and worship. Let's talk a little bit about something. So, you know, there's there's always a good time that we can give praise and worship to our creator. We've talked about this at nauseum at some points, how everything in creation is absolutely beautiful. It's absolutely perfect. There's nothing that I could ever come up with as a redesign that would enhance anything at all. In fact, everything that I could ever 
enhance would be a um, problem with creation. All right, praise and worship. What do you guys have? Uh, the thing I have is uh, I'm thankful for the prote protection of our dogs, the protection of level that we can be protected. Uh, outside of Yahoo, Yahoo gives an extra level of protection with the dogs. Yeah, absolutely. It is it is a dangerous world that we live in. Because for those who don't know, we have ten pit bulls, and the dogs are one of I think one of Yah's most amazing creations. Uh, not only are they what they call man's best friend, but that it's true that these these animals desire to be around humans. They desire to be petted by by humans, and they will do anything. They're completely loyal to humankind, and there's they're, they're kind of a, a one kind of an animal. Um, you know, you don't have that with cats. You don't have that with anything else. Dogs are truly man's best friend, and they are. We've been blessed with a time in such a life that we get get to live a a lifetime of extreme experiences and get to um, see Yah's creation in a pack world. Most people will never ever get to live life that where they live and they exist within a dog pack, and we do. And so it is kind of a, a strange world here. But yeah, that's beautiful. Nicole, what do you got? I say the birds, just to hear them every morning, watch them fly around, watch them build nests. They're just an amazing thing to watch. Absolutely, yeah. And I mean, we can go even even further. I mean, if you look at the design of a bird and you look at the bone structure of birds, where the bones in a bird are hollow, and you know everything that our creator has designed, imagine a bird that had bones like we have, right? They would all be walking. They would be walking the distance. They wouldn't be flying south for the winter. They'd be walking south for the winter and everything would, would get them. But yeah, flight, hum, the, the flight of birds and just the, it, the way they fly and they can glide up in the sky and they can do just amazing things. It is amazing. <laughs> our creator is awesome. Eli? I'm thankful for our flower. We have it for us. We have it for our dogs if we need it. It, it, we can last, it lasts for a while. Flower is a blessing from young. Are you talking flowers or flower? Flower, like cooking flower. Cooking flower, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Our creator has, without a shadow of a doubt, set us apart that we are able to do what we are able to do. And we don't have to worry about a lot of the other issues within life. But yeah, we have a lot of flower. A lot of flower has actually gone bad. Um, and we didn't realize that when we first started getting flour. But the flower has gone bad and we, we didn't know what to do. But we ended up, now we almost have a lifetime of pit bull dog food, um, as well as we have our our flower as well. So, yeah, amazing. Cade, what do you got? I am thankful for the animals in general. Just amazing create creatures. Every single one of them has their own specific designs. You have bees for pollinating. You have pigs for cleaning up trash. You have the fish for the sea and all the things. And Yaw just created such amazing animals in every design he has. It's Yeah, it's a beautiful cycle. It is a beautiful cycle of um, life. Down here in South America where we are at, you can, you can have an animal that can die out in the middle of a jungle and it will be consumed in a matter of two or three days. You won't have much left. Um, depends, but usually birds from hundreds of miles will come and the whole skies are just, their birds are everywhere and they're coming down and they'll eat the kill. And Yah has created something, you know, like you said, a pig. A pig's job is to go around and pick up trash is to, to go and eat stuff that people shouldn't eat um humans should obviously not eat pig but um yeah it, it is beautiful all right so mine is i am thankful for reflexes and the way that we are built and when i say reflexes there's a lot of times you'll drop something you'll be able to catch it in the air or you will uh something will come at you and you're able to blink before you lose your eyes um, everything that we have, whether it is senses, uh, uh, our senses or touch or feel or how we can, can feel like heat and cold, if we were unable or we were built in a different way, um, we would be hurting ourselves day in and day out. There wouldn't be a day that we didn't go through. We, everything that we knew, we wouldn't know because we couldn't say, hey, don't touch that. It's hot because we wouldn't know if it was hot. We would just burn ourselves. Hey, look, your hands, your skin is melting off your hands. You probably should let go of the hot pan. And we wouldn't know it, right? We know we know when we have like a, a slight little uh, bug bite here and there. And we are our bodies are amazing, amazing cre creations. And yeah. All right. So this is our Shabbat special that we go across. And we, we do every Shabbat. And we do what they did back in the days, which is to r read the Torah. And the Torah, for those, anybody that's joining us new or anybody that ever sees us, the Torah is the, um, what they call, I guess the Christians have it as something they call taboo, where it's something that isn't for them. It's something that has been done away with. It is something that, uh, it's the old people of Moses. They, they, they did this. They will even go as far as saying, oh, that's only for God's chosen people. And then you're like, wow, don't you want to be a chosen person of Yah? 
And when you read through the scriptures, you only find one way to be chosen by our creator. And it's not the people that are living in sin. Although there are times that Yah will come and use the people living in sin for his will and for his, his uh, w you know, desires. But if you are looking to be a child of the Most High, there is one way to do it. So as we go through the Torah, and we, it, I don't want this to get boring for folks, because it is something that is absolutely not boring. And the website was having a little bit of problems today, but for anybody who um, could actually get to this and you want to follow along, it's, it's, at, it's simple enough. It's yahooandthetorah.net, and it's y-h-w-h-a-n-d-t-h-e-t-o-r-a-h.net. And as we go through this, um, we Nicole did a simplified version. There's a full version that will give you the entire scriptures. And then we have a simplified version now that it's, it's really easy to read. And when we read through these, if we can have you keep on your mind that these are the forsaken laws of our creator. We are in a generation now where nobody is seeking the ways of our creator. And when we look through these laws... There's nothing taboo about them. There's no evil to them. There's no disgusting stuff. There's no. There's nothing that would end up getting you killed. Everything in this is the way of our creator. And it is very important that we do things of this nature. And I'll be the first. I'll say commandment number one is to be fruitful. And that is a, a huge commandment in of itself. If we are looking at commandments of commandments, being fruitful would, would stop us from being um, lazy sluggards on the couch. Right. If we're sitting there spending, you know, five days a week on the couch and we never, ever get off and we're dependent upon a, a government or something to take care of us. You know, we are not being fruitful. Our creator has provided us with hands and a, a beautiful mind and a body that is functioning. And for the most of us, we can do a lot of this stuff. So that is a very important. That's why I think that, you know, the very first commandment is to be fruitful. All right. Let's continue on, guys. Let's go through these. Multiply. Command three, replenish the earth. Command four, subdue it and have dominion over the fish. Oh, I need to fix that. Fowl and every living creature. Yeah, there's a couple of errors in this, but it's for the most part, you get it. So have dominion over the fish, fowl, and every living creatures. Command five, the earth bearing every tree is for food. Man and woman should build their own families. Command seven, master sin. Every clean moving thing that lives shall be food for you. Do not eat the blood. Walk before me and be perfect. Guard Yahuwah's covenant, laws, statutes, and commandments. And you see, we have a few typos in this, but we're, we're getting our game together. But if you can, if we can just take a, a quick look at commandment 11, and it has guard Yahuwah's covenant, laws, statutes, and commandments. In this, there's a lot of verses here, right? So we start with Genesis, and then we go all the way through Exodus. Right now, we're on Numbers. And as we enter into Deuteronomy, which today will be the last day of Numbers. We're going to make it through Numbers today. When we get in Deuteronomy, it's going to reinforce a tremendous amount of these, and so this list is going to get a little bit longer. Kate. Every male shall be circumcised at eight days old. And what, what okay, there's a lot of there's a lot of discussion regarding circumcision. A lot of people are they said it's it's a um it's a just a bloody horrible thing, and you're you know, they they'll even say that you're you're molesting children um, when you do this and the kids never recover from this. But it is a covenant between ourselves and our creator. And he says that you want to be circumcised. And he says it's on eight days. And if it is a covenant between he and us, why wouldn't we want to be in this? And why wouldn't we do everything possible that it would take to do this? Because if you are not circumcised, you should not be taking part of Passover. That is part of the thing. So that is a, a commandment as well. All right, 13. Teach your children the commands and guard the way of Yahuwah. Remember Yahuwah's name for all generations. Keep the Passover. Keep the Feast of Unleavened Bread, Matzah. There is one Torah for the stranger and the Ebrim. Sanctify all firstborn Yahuwah. Commandment 19. There are no mighty ones before Yah. Command 20. You shall not make graven image. 21. Do not bring Yah's name to naught. Commandment 22. Keep the Shabbat. There we are. Hey, we're keeping the Shabbat. We're keeping the commandment. And if you can see, there's, uh, what, nine verses in there? Three, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, and there's nine verses in there. Um, and that's just the beginning because they will say it over 240 times throughout scriptures that we should be observing this day and keeping this day. It's very important. Okay. Command 23, honor your parents. Here, here. Do not kill. Do not break wedlock. Do not steal. Do not make false accusations against your neighbor. Do not covet anything of your neighbors. Commandment 29. Do not make an altar from rock that a tool has touched. 
Do not go up to the altar by the steps. If a man steal cattle, he shall restore it five times. We are as laws for, for criminals. criminals. Doesn't exactly say a lot on that, but it, it has a, a the entire, it's a, it's most of the, the chapter. Nicole, what does it have in there for laws for criminals? So it was like if you create a fire, you have to pay restitution for that fire. If you burn somebody's stuff down if with the fire. If your cow gets into somebody else's land, you're supposed to pay them back for what your cow destroyed. Beautiful. Okay, and so that is actually a lot of that. Um, and this is added in there, right? So this is one that we did not have. And yep. This is why we, we haven't talked about this before, but this is one that Eli and I missed a long time ago. And for those who are wondering how long we've been doing this, this particular thing we've been doing for 171 days. 171 days ago, we began in Genesis 1, and here we are. And so it hasn't been a year, but it's been it's been a long time, a lot far longer than I thought it was. I'm going to okay. interrupt you real quick. Yep. The grant says that people had to be circumcised to enter the land with Joshua, Yehoshua. Yeah, ab absolutely. Yeah, you would not want to be like that. And, you know, those guys that are, are talking about it just being a... a uh, like a child uh, abuse or something of the sort. Look, I can't remember being circumcised. I can't remember any of this stuff, right? We're, we're, I'm sure it didn't feel good as a baby, but that is why we were a baby, and that's why we should be circumcised long before we ever can remember this kind of stuff. All right, next, Kate. 33. You shall stone the wizards and mediums. Okay, and this was, again, we're trying to get the exact laws that we can keep today. There are a couple in this stuff that if you go out and you kill the wizards and mediums, expect a jail sentence. So a lot of what we're doing here is trying to get it through our heads that, hey, you know, you see a, a lady out there, a, a lady who's a, who's a witch, right? Stay away from her. Stay away. Stay away. Get, get away from there. I mean, obviously, we're be, we've been called out of the land of Babylon and we've been told to flee from Babylon and we're supposed to get away from it. But we're, all of us are still surrounded by all these things. The culture that we are in makes it okay, right? They even have a day in October, Halloween, where they celebrate the witches. And they, it's just one of the most evil days around. And everybody, including the Christians, dress up their kids in little heathen gear. And they send them out and they have people bag for candy, right? It's, it's sick. So just be careful as we're going through this. Obviously, we shouldn't allow wizards and witches and things of that nature to live but if you do it, you're you're in you're going to end up in a lot of trouble right now. Okay, thirty-four. Do not lie with beasts. No sacrifices to other gods. Do not oppress the stranger, the fatherless, or widow. Yep. If you borrow your neighbor's raiment, return it to him or sunset. Yep. And these are all extra ones. We these are all new to those who have followed us prior to this because we we found this or it was this week, right? We found this earlier this week yep. that we had missed this. And, um, in Exodus 22. In Exodus 22, there was one chapter that Eli and I did that we were having some disgruntled times during that day, and we missed a lot of this. So we, we actually went through this, and we found it, which I'm, I'm glad about. But we're also going to go, once we have the, all the commands together, we're going to read this yet again. We're going to go through this one more time in another trans, in three more translations, and we're going to try to dial it in and make sure we have this perfected. So we're not done on this list yet. All right. Do not curse the ruler of your people. Do not eat what is torn of any beast. No false reports. Do not follow the multitude of evil. Do not judge unrighteous against the poor. Bring back your enemy's cattle if you find it going astray. 45. Help the animals of your enemy. Stay away from rumors and gossipers. Take no bribes. Do not oppress a stranger. Love the stranger. Give your land rest in the seventh year. Yep. Do not mention any pagan names. Keep the Feast of Yahuwah. And we are coming up on feast time pretty soon, aren't we? Yep. What we do we got, got? First, we have the Feast of Trumpets. Yep. Or Yom, Yom Kippur. Is that Yom, 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 Yom Tura. Tura. And then we have Yom Kippur. Yom Kippur. Uh-huh. Day of Atonement. Okay. What, when are these coming up? So the, what is it? September 20, no. August, September, do we know? It's in September. Uh, Yom Kippur is like uh, October 7th through 9th, right? Something like that? Yeah. Somewhere in those days. Okay, so we'll, as we get closer to them, we will we will make sure everyone is, is like uh, reminded for sure. All right, do not cook your goat in his mother's milk. Obey the messenger Yahuwah sends before you. Command 54, do not bow down to other Elohim. Serve Yahuwah. Make no covenant with other Elohim or outsiders of land. Do not make or use this anointing oil on a person, and also do not make or use this perfume on a normal person. So this is uh, 57, uh, 57 is screwed up. It says 257 is right there. 
So we're actually off. Oh, yep. Okay. So anyway, that's fifty-seven fifty-eight. Um, and this this was talking about the kind of anointing oils that they use in the tabernacle. And so um, this is good that we're proofreading this. This is actually our first proof for this. All right, fifty-eight. Do not eat the fat. Fifty-nine. Do what you say you are going to do. Okay, sixty. Return. What is your name? Obey Yah's dietary laws. Dietary laws. Do we eat the pig? No. no. Why don't we eat the pig? It's an abomination. All right, what did we hear this week from a Christian? He doesn't eat, he, he said that Yah took the pig away because it was too good. And that's, that's, that was the whole test, to see sense. if somebody could stop eating the pig because it was too darn good. All right, next. Stage two, women's time of separation. Stay away from them, yes. And the laws that are with them, men should not lie with the women during that. 63. Hygiene law. Keep the day of Yom Kippurim. Do not uncover the nakedness of your family. Yes. Do not take your woman's sister for wife. Do not lie with a woman in her uncleanness. You shall not sacrifice your children to Moloch. Do not be a sodomite. Be holy. Do not reap the corners of your field or you shall not glean your vineyard. Do not deal falsely or defraud your neighbor. Do not lie or be a liar. Pay your workers for the day's wage they are due. Do not harm the disabled. Do not injure your neighbor. Do not hate your brother. Rebuke your neighbor for his sin. Love your neighbor as yourself. Do not do not diverge your cattle. Do not mingle your seed. Do not mingle linen and wool. Do not lie with a taken woman. Do not eat the fruit of the tree for three years. Do not practice sorcery. Do not round the beard or the corners of your head. Here, here. Do not cut yourself for dead. Do not get tattoos. Don't ruin your body. Do not prostitute your daughter. Do not defile your temple. Do not consult the medium. Respect your elders. Hear, hear. Have correct weights and measurements. Do not walk in the manner of the nation. Feast of first fruits, Shavuot, Omer count. Keep them. Feast of trumpets, Yom Teror. Keep them. Feast of Sukkot, slash Shemni Atzeret. Keep it. If you blaspheme the name of Yahuwah, you shall be put to death. If you kill your neighbor's animal, you must give him another. Repay injury for injury. Honor the Jubilee year. Confess your sins to Yahuwah and repay who you have trespassed against. And then they have a Torah for being a Nazarene. If you want to set yourself apart and you want to be set apart for Yah, then there's rules for that as well. And that is in Numbers 6, 2 through 21. Okay, 104. Blow the trumpet on the new moon and feast. Yes. Wear zit seats on the four corners of your garments. Whoever touches the command, whoever touches the corpse. <clears throat> Follow Yahuwah's laws of inheritance. Okay, and what happens if somebody fall, touches a corpse of a human body? What is it? What is? They are unclean for seven days. And they yeah. have to bath on the third day to be clean. If they don't, then they are kicked out. Right, and if they don't, and say the, but they had to bath using the he, ashes of a red heifer, red heifer as, they, as kind yeah. of a clinging thing. So how do we, how do we deal with this today? Uh, we would use Yehoshua as our uh, sacrifice. But you'd probably still take a bath. Yeah, definitely take a bath. Yeah, it kind of still follows the same I don't think we most. have any more red heifers around. Uh, no, I don't know. Yeah, and it, we're not Levites either, so we would not want to attempt any of this, I don't think. I think it would be a bad news brown if we tried. All right, so here we go over here, and we are going to go into this. And we are already here, and I will bring the sefer up. And is everybody ready? Yep. Numbers 34. We're going to run through this. We're going to finish this off today. What I want everyone to be aware of is that um, we're trying to pick out commandments is what we're trying to do. And okay. so when we see something there. Um, okay, so let's uh, quickly before we go into it, let's say hi to everybody in the chat room. Who do we got in the chat room? All right. So we got, oh, sorry. I just, all right. So we have Lester. We have. Lester, the, make sure you're drinking water, brother. The La Grand. The water's going to heal you up. The Grand. Grand. We love you, Graham. I miss DG. Sorry. Shabbat Shalom. Hey, DG. Uh, Zachary Z is here. Ah, Zach. Awesome. Mason Shane. Mason. Hey. What's up? Is Barkley in? Yep. Barkley. Barkley. All right. And Barkley. I'm sure Deborah's there with him. All right. Hi, Deborah. Much love, fam. We love you guys. And I don't know how to say this last name. Give it a run. Shiki. Asa? Asa? Chai, Chai Asa? Chai Asa? Okay. Well, much love to everybody out there. Hello, hello, hello. We thank you guys for joining in and let us begin our reading. And we, uh, for those who do not know, the bottom of this screen is the Sefer. And the top of it on the left-hand side is the King James Version. The right-hand side is the NIV. And for those who are hooked onto one particular version, 
Uh, there's not a particular version that I have ever found without translation errors, uh, including the Sefer. The Sefer is riddled with stuff. King is riddled with stuff. NIV is riddled with stuff. Um, you need to study yourself to be approved unto Yah, a workman who needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth and getting to the bottom of a lot of this stuff. And so here we are. All right. And Yahuwah has spoken to El Moshe, saying, Command the children of Yashrael and say unto them, When ye come into the land of Canaan, this is the land that shall fall unto you for an inheritance, even the land of Canaan, with the coast thereof. All right. And before, actually, I did, I messed this up because I did want to go into another screen and take a look at this, but we'll, we'll take a look at this before. Um, if you guys can see the thumbnail that Nicole provided on this, where it has yellow at the top and yellow at the bottom, we believe this is what they are talking about. And so we'll go over that here in just a little bit. Verse three. Then your south quarter shall be from the wilderness of Zin along by the coast of Edom, and your south border shall be the outmost coast of the Salt Sea eastward. And your border shall turn from the Negev to the ascent of Ma'ala Akribim and pass on to Zin, and the going forth therefore, thereof shall be from the Negev to Kadesh Barnea and shall go on to Katsar Adar and pass on to Atzman. And the border shall fetch a compass from Atzman unto the river of Mitzriam, and the goings out of it shall be at the sea. And as for the western border, ye shall even have the great sea for a border. This shall be your west border. And this shall be your north border. From the great sea ye shall point out for you Mount Hor. From Mount Hor ye shall point out your border unto the entrance of Kamath, and the goings forth of the border shall be to Zedad. And the border shall go on to Zipron, and the goings out of it shall be at Katsar Enan. This shall be your north border. And ye shall point out your east border from Katsar Enan to Shepam. And the coast shall go down from Shepam to Rivla on the east side of Ain. And the border shall descend and shall reach unto the side of the sea of Kinneroth eastward. And the border shall go to the Yardin, and the goings out of it shall be at the Salt Sea. This shall be your land and the coast thereof round about. And Moshe commanded the children of Yashrael, saying, This is the land which ye shall inherit by lot which Yahuwah commanded to give unto the nine tribes and to the half tribe. For the tribe of the children of Reuben, according to the house of their fathers, and the tribe of the children of Gad, according to the house of their fathers, have received their inheritance, and half the tribe of Manasseh have received their inheritance. Okay, so what is what is he talking about right there? Who's received what? And so how? this is because back a few chapters back, that they uh, they decided before they're like, hey, we want this land. This land is really good. We really want this land. So uh, can we have this land? And then they made a deal that we can still we'll still fight with you guys. We'll leave our families here. We'll go out and fight with you guys. Get you as your land, and then we'll come back to our land. Okay, but there's there, should there be twelve tribes of Israel? How do we end up with difference? Um, okay. Because uh, Levi does not count as a tribe because they are the priests. They get no land inheritance. But the tribe of Joseph, when Jacob Jacob blessed Joseph's children. They got divided into two, so there's now the tribe of Yosef are divided into two. So basically, we have 13 tribes, but since Levi doesn't count as an inheritance, they don't get inheritance, we, get, we have 12. Nice. Beautiful. Thank you. All right. Um, I'm at 15? Yep. All right. The two tribes and the half tribe have received their inheritance on this side of the Yardin, near Jericho, eastward, toward the sun rising. And Yahuwah has spoken to Moshe, saying, These are the names of the men which shall divide the land unto you, Eleazar the priest, and Yahusha the son of Nun. And ye shall take one prince of every tribe to divide the land by inheritance. And the names of the men are, of, are these, of the tribe of Yehuda, Caleb, the son of Yehuna, Yefuna, and the tribe of the children of Shimon, Shimuel, the son of Amniad, of the tribe of Binyamin, Elidad, the son of Kiklon, and the prince of the tribe of the children of Dan, Buki, the son of Yogli, the prince of the children of Yosef, for the tribe of the children of Manasseh, Keniel, the son of Ephod, and the prince of the tribe of the children Ephraim, Kimuel, the son of Shiphatan, and the prince of the tribe of the children of Zebulun, Eletzia Tasfan, and I think I missed that up. Let me try that again. Eliasafon, Eliasvon, the son of Parnak, and the prince of the tribe of the children of Yisachar, Palietel El, the son of Azan, and the prince of the tribe of the children of Asher, Akihud, the son of Shalomi, and the prince of the tribe of the children of Naphtali, Peda El, and the son of Amnihud. 
These are they whom Yahuwah commanded to divide the inheritance unto the children of Yashrael into the land of Canaan. All right, so we're going to go into the next chapter, but what I want us to look at real quick is right here in the gallery. And let's take a quick look. So this was the one that we did yesterday when we were looking through this, and this was actually really helpful for us so that we could figure out what exactly is happening. And as they started up out of Egypt, right, if you follow those red lines, they went from Ramses, right, right out of Ramses, and they went into Ephem, and then Merah, Merah, and then all the way down here, and then Yah brought them back up. And this discussion we had yesterday, because these places right here, this Masharath, Hashem, all these ones right here, they spent a lot of time basically traveling between these two points right here, right? They, they, they were probably spending days, weeks, months on their travels, but here it seems like there was a lot of, a lot of stuff. And then they went up into here and around over here, and then somewhere they made it down into here and then all the way up into here. So now that we have that, I don't know if this is a good map or not, but this was essentially what we were looking at and everybody, I'm colorblind, so this is actually a huge mess to me. I can't really tell any of these colors together. There's like all these, they're all blended together. I can tell you the blues and there's some blues in there, but everything else looks red or brown. I don't know what it is. Um, but for uh, those who are not colorblind, this is the divisions of the land. And um, we're just trying to figure that out, what the yellow stuff was, because I, I thought they occupied up higher, but probably not. All right, Nicole, do you have something? Nope. Okay. I just want to mention that jo when they said Joseph, or not Joseph, Joshua and Caleb were part of the leaders of dividing the tribe, they would have to be much older than everyone else. Oh, well, yeah. Too, everyone else dying off, and they're, they're the only ones left. Yep. They're, like, way older than everyone else. Yeah, yeah. So everybody has died off right to this point, right? We are actually... 40 years later is what this was. It's 40 years, but only a few chapters for, for this. So, all right, let's continue on. This is into Numbers 35. And Yahuwah spoken to El Moshe in the plains of Moab by the Yardin near Yeriko, saying, Command the children of Yashrael that they give unto the Levium of the inheritance of the possession cities to dwell in, and ye shall give also unto the Levium suburbs for the cities round about them. All right, so what are we saying here? So the Levites had their own little communities in there, in the land. They had their own little communities in the thing. I think that's what it's talking about. Is they were part of the land, but they each got their own little villages, I think. Yeah, so Yah separated them. He's put them out all around. Why would Yah separate everybody, Jade? Uh, so that people didn't have to go a long ways to go find a priest to sacrifice. So if you did a sin, you go find a priest next door and go ahead and your sacrifice. Right, or somebody that could guide you because a priest would also know the Torah far better than everybody else because that is what they live in. By, by this means. And they had to go to them to see, like, when they were sick, too. So right. they didn't have to travel far. Right. So they're basically, they're doctors as well. And so they, they put them all around there. And for those who can hear our roof, I am so sorry. It just, it makes these noises when the sun's out and stuff. There's nothing actually hitting it, but it's just making crazy noises. All right. And the cities shall they have to dwell in, and the suburbs of them shall be for their cattle, and for their goods, and for all their beasts. Now, Jade, would you please stop biting your nails on this? Um, what does that mean for cattle and for goods and for all the beasts, Jade? Uh, so basically, they because they get a lot of uh, animals given to them and stuff for like for their gifts um, or sacrifices, so they need a place to store all this stuff. But I mean, if they're sacrificing their animals, why do they have a ton of animals? Because uh, there's a lot of people sinning, so they have a yeah, lot. Yeah, but of they, didn't, they they went and brought the cattle to them to sacrifice them. How are they still alive? I don't think they sacrificed all of them that same day. I don't think it was like that. I don't think they had like all the time it was killing and slaughtering but i'm sure they had everything burning all the time but i don't think they were killing everything at once right but i mean if somebody came up and, and brought a sacrifice to that you would kill that sacrifice while you were there right you wouldn't like put it in your pen or something of a sort and tell the guy hey have a good day your sacrifice has been completed right so how did the levites end up with a lot of uh, cattle i mean why do they need all of this stuff uh, maybe they had the, maybe they had their own stuff or their own meat outside of sacrifices. What about the times when people needed to they wanted to, to give up like a part of their land or wanted to give up something like a you know a um, I don't know just a gift to Yah and that ended up with the Levites right and so there was a lot of excess of that because people were giving what did they call it uh, an, not an oath but a uh, tithe not a tithe almost a tithe oh, almost like, like a, a tithe like but a, like a, a, a separation it was a the sanctification yes. Yeah, so, yeah, so I mean, basically, you can ordain your stuff and you can give it up to the priest, and, and it's basically a gift to Yah. All right, so let's continue on. 
And the suburbs of the cities, which ye shall give unto the Levium, shall reach from the wall of the city and outward a thousand cubits round about. Anyone know what a thousand cubits is off the top of your head? Eli, what do you got up there? So a thousand cubits, 1,500 feet or about 450 meters. So they're basically, I mean, 1,500, it was 1,500 meters? 450, yeah, 1,500 feet. That's not very far. So that is, for us, that is um, 5,280 feet is a mile. So we're talking about a little over one-fifth of a mile. Um, so these guys were really close to the city, right? Within walking distance, you could definitely walk and go get to a priest. Uh, so I think you're walking just a couple of minutes and be there. Yeah, it wouldn't take very long. And ye shall measure from without the city on the east side 2,000 cubits, and on the south side 2,000 2, cubits, and on the west side 2,000 cubits, and on the north side 2,000 cubits. And the city shall be in the midst. This shall be to them the suburbs of the cities. Okay, so what are we talking about here? What are they measuring this for? I think it's a, the square. I think it's like a square. One side right, is like 2,000 feet on one side. 3,000 feet. The other, or, yeah, 3,000 feet on one side. 3,000 feet on the other side. And like 1,000 feet. But what did they put here? Does anyone get this? I think they put so, Levi's. I think they gave them. I think they gave them a walled city. Well, they gave them. They well, they they, they gave. They surrounded the city with them, right? Is this what we're reading here? Mine, in the NIV it says they will have this area as pasture land for the towns. So still more pasture land. Yeah. Okay. So they. So the first part of this. And that might that might give them land to build houses as well. All right, and the suburbs of the cities which he shall give unto the Levium shall reach from the wall of the city. So suburbs are going to be different than this. Suburbs are going to be other places where people are uh, living. Or right? yours says suburbs, my NIV says pasture land. Pasture land and four? Yeah, and all of them where yours says suburbs is always pasture land. Uh, okay, so we're talking, so you're talking like, yeah, but we, we don't know, we know suburbs is like a little city outside of a city. All right, so it's, it's pasture land. All right, five. Is it five or, or six? six? All right. Six. And among the cities which ye shall give unto the Levium, there shall be six cities for refuge, which ye shall appoint for the manslayer that he may flee thither. And to them ye shall add forty and two cities. Okay, so what does that mean, forty and two cities? Forty two cities of Forty two cities of refuge for those. Someone kills someone, they can run there. And it talks about that. Later. Okay, so first of all, it says there's a, you should give uh, six cities for refuge. The Levium, there shall be. Okay, so the Levium, Levites only have six cities for refuge. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, that he may be hither, and to them ye shall add 40 and two cities. I don't understand that. Does anyone get that? Okay, so Levites get 42 cities, and then six cities go for the city of refuge. Uh, is that what it said? No, it said... If you read the uh, next verse, you'll understand. Okay. So all the cities which ye shall give to the Levium shall be 40 and eight cities. Them shall ye give to with their suburbs. So only six so of si the 42 are for... Six of the 48. Six of the 48. If you have murdered somebody, mm -hmm. you, have, you can flee to them, but you cannot flee to the other 40 uh, and have any kind of safety. Right. <laughs> All right. And the cities which ye shall give shall be of the possession, uh, shall be of the possession of the children of Yashrael. From them that have many, ye shall give many, but from them that have few, ye shall give few. Everyone shall give of his cities unto the Levium according to his inheritance, which he inherits. And Yahuwah spoken to El Moshe, saying, Speak unto the children of Yashrael and say unto them, when ye are come over the Yardine into the land of Canaan, then ye shall appoint this, you cities to be cities of refuge for you, that the slayer may flee thither, which kills any person at unawares. Okay, what did you I guys say? I, who accidentally killed someone shall flee there. Okay, so this is interesting, right? There's, you're going to, this is, this is very, very interesting here because this essentially is, um, this is uh, like a family against you, right? Mm -hmm. You're you actually just went and killed somebody, and like the brother of the guy that you accidentally killed is coming for you, right? So this is this is some very interesting stuff here, and I I, I can't tell you I did read through this. I can't tell you I quite understand the exact um, concept of it all because it's all about when the judges, the judges um, or the the whoever's in charge of it, they're only good up until that time. So let's continue on. Twelve. There's eleven. 12. Cool. All right. And they shall be unto you cities for refuge from the avenger, that the manslayer die not until he stand before the assembly in judgment. Okay. So that that tells us something, right? That tells us that even though the guy accidentally killed somebody, he still has to stand judgment for it, right? So he's still going to have some sort of a trial. Okay. 13. And of these cities, which ye shall give six cities, shall ye have for refuge. You shall give three cities on this side of the Yardine, and three cities shall ye give in the land of Canaan, which shall be cities of refuge. 
These six cities shall be a refuge, both for the children of Yashrael and for the stranger and for the sojourner among them, that everyone that kills any person unawares may flee thither. Okay, anyone else have anything different on any of your versions? Mm -hmm. No. Okay, does this, what do you guys think of this? Um, I think this is a good thing. This is a good thing to have, like, a city refuge because if someone dies, someone gets killed, right? Even if it's accident, there's so many people that are upset about it, people that are still want to take vengeance, people that are still not going to be accepting of someone's death. So this is a way to protect people if they were innocent. So what do you think the city would look like? It probably doesn't have walls and probably places to, like, block Massive down. wall. I would say massive walls and massive guards, right? Because the dude who's coming to avenge his brother is going to probably try to sneak in the city. And this city has to actually stop this. And so this city has to be special cities, right? These are not going to be just average Joe cities. These are going to be something different that is able to take care of the people of Yah as they're trying to work through these situations. All right, 16. And if he smite him with an instrument of iron so that he die, he is a murderer. The murderer shall surely be put to death. Okay? I'm not going to move up on mine because I want to discuss this. And if he smite him with a throwing a stone... Wherewith he may die, and he die, he is a murderer. The murderer shall surely be put to death. Okay. Um, so if it's not an accidental kill, you will be killed. Yeah. So the, if this is not, an, if you didn't accidentally do it, and how do you accidentally kill someone? Uh, like the head of your axe flies off, or like a tree falls on top of them. Tree, some some, there, some accidents. Some there's wild. a thousand ways to die accidentally, and it's not. And most of the time, it's not going to be murder. Okay, but if you kill him with iron, you're dead, right? Mm -hmm. you, you, with what you killed, you will be killed. And with a stone, you'll pro they'll probably stone you to death as well. Um, or if he smite him with a hand weapon of wood, wherewith he may die, and he die, he is a murderer. The murderer shall surely be put to death. Okay, so we just learned three different ways to kill people, right? You have w iron, stone, and then you have wood. Are there any other ways to kill people? Are yeah, you, I think these are like... I mean, you're, 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 I think these are the intentional ways because... Someone's not going to die from just taking wood unless it's like like inflicted like on purpose, right? If you take a stone and like you're like trying to kill him with the stone, like you, you could be chucking a rock at like a squirrel and actually kill somebody. It doesn't it doesn't take much to actually hurt somebody. In fact, let me tell you, when I was a kid, I was sitting there in fifth grade, fifth grade, and I was sitting there. I had a little itty bitty tiny pebble, and my friends and I we were all sitting around in this thing, right? I just threw a rock up in the air, and I it, this little pebble knocked my best friend's tooth out. It like his whole tooth. I got home. I got beat. My dad's like, "Why are you chucking rocks?" And I'm like, "It was this. It was a. I was just sitting in a thing. We were. I wasn't throwing rocks. I was just tossing little. And it wasn't a big rock. It was the, the size of a smaller than a fingernail. And I knocked his tooth out. And so um, it doesn't take much to actually hurt somebody with a, a something of the sort. And I got to pay for that. It was like two hundred bucks back in like 1980s. Man, that was expensive. I think it was in the, yeah, it was in the early 90s. All right. Where do we have this next? 19. 19. The revenger of blood himself shall slay the murderer. When he meets him, he shall slay him. Wow. Okay, so that's hardcore right there, right? Uh, it, it, it's it's going to take a little... I mean, here's the gig, right? To actually do the art of killing somebody, it's hardcore, right? It's not something that normal people can just go out and do, right? Because we value human life to the point of this, but the... The laws are that the revenger himself, the guy that needs to see this done, is the guy that will kill him. So that's that, right? Imagine that in today's courtrooms in North America, right? If the people that could, you could have, you know, if you could kill those who killed your loved ones or something of the sort, would, is that right? What do you guys think? Is this still right? What about forgiving your neighbor? What about forgiving those who have done evil against you? Right. I if it's an accident, then this is different story. If they did it on purpose, they'll probably kill again on purpose. So it's probably like, probably get rid of these evil. Probably kill them and, and just yes, yeah, so like us. rid the evil, rid like the shed blood. If this is an accident, if it's an accident, then they then there's I mean they should probably. What are you What are you gonna do over an accident? You can only be so angry. Well, you. the revenger of blood is gonna yeah, want to kill you for that. I mean, it, even if it's an accident, your brother or your whatever it is is gone, and there's nothing that can bring a human being back, and so. This is just some interesting stuff. All right. Like, does the dude deserve death for accidentally killing someone? What, what was an accident? He wasn't meaning to. Well, that's, that's why you would have a city like this, right? You would, First of all, everybody can get their emotions under control because I'm sure the very first thing is they get the guy in there, they give him a place, and they start calming the situation down, right? And you probably have the revenger of blood that sets a, a tent up outside of that city when he knows that they went into that, right? This is an interesting way that Yah has people dealing with this stuff because as humans... 
we get completely emotional and what you would do the next day isn't what you would do a year uh, ago, right? As the pain, as the, 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 your heart starts mending, you, you may not be the same guy like a year ago that wants to go kill this guy. But immediately after somebody in your family dies that somebody has killed, you would definitely want to go lay hands on that guy in one way, shape, or form. Okay, so this is interesting. 20. But if he thrust him of hatred or hurl at him by laying in wait that he die... Or in enmity smite him with his hand that he die, he that smote him shall surely be put to death, for he is a murderer. The revenger of blood shall slay the murderer when he meets him. So there you go. Jay, that answers your question about beating somebody to death, right? That That's it. And then the revenger of blood is still after you, and um, it sounds like a, a, a process, right? The revenger of blood sounds like everybody in their family had a revenger of blood. The uncle that you don't know about. Okay. 22. But if he thrust him suddenly without enmity or have cast upon him anything without laying in wait or with any stone wherewith a man may die, seeing him not and cast it upon him that he may die or was not his enemy, never sought his harm. Okay. Then the assembly shall judge between the slayer and the revenger of blood according to these judgments. Okay. So what is this saying right here? So if you, as this says, if you accidentally killed someone, if you actually use a stone or you actually pushed him or something. Well, you didn't have any hatred. You didn't. You weren't meaning to kill him. You had no harm towards towards that guy. Then the congregation, basically the people that were in charge of dealing with these crimes, have to judge. They're like, "Render blood. Is this guy worth killing? Is he? Should we kill him or should we just forgive him?" Okay, so I'm I'm confused here. Why is the revenger of blood? Um, why are why are we why are we judging between the slayer and the revenger of blood? Because the revenger of blood wants to kill him. The, Got it. The slayer has to be put in judgment. They right. They have to evaluate everything. So I assume there was almost like a court setup. It's probably for these see if people the like lying this guy. Not. This guy's time is up. He needs to be evaluated. They need to evaluate the facts, the circumstances, and everything around them. Yeah, definitely different than we have today by all. And it's probably like to judge him to see if he's lying about it. Like, did you accidentally kill this dude or not? And he's like, I accidentally killed him and he didn't. That's why the Avenger Blood's like, no, he killed my brother like this or someone else. Right, the Avenger Blood's definitely going to be out for his dead slain friend or brother or whatever it is. All right, 25. Hold on. All right. The Grand says such a picture of the Father's compassion. Yes. Of this. And then Fearmonger says very righteous law. Yeah, it, it, yeah, it is a very righteous law. I, I don't know any other way that we would deal with this, right? Here's the Here's the thing is if the revenger of blood is unable to take care of the evil that was bestowed upon his family, he's going to carry around with him for a very long time a lot of anger. Like he's going to, he's going to, be, he might become a very different person. Um, human, humankind is very strange how this works, but yeah, very righteous. All right, 25. And the assembly shall deliver the slayer out of the hand of the revenger of blood and the assembly shall restore him to the city of his refuge whether he, is, whether he is fled, and he shall abide in it until the death of the high priest, which was anointed with the holy oil. Okay, that's a huge thing right there. Let's not continue on on this. It could be there for a long time. It could be there a long time, or the, the, guy, the guy could die the next day. And the revenge, I mean, basically it says this guy has to die, right? It says the, um, unto whether he has fled, he shall abide it until the death of the high priest. So that's a, that could be a problem or could not be a problem. If the, if the high priest is a young guy, then you got 50, 60 years, right? But if it, the dude is like ancient, 104 or something, and he's like on his deathbed, then this revenge of blood is going to be after you like in a year or like six months, right? So that's going to be very, very interesting. So I, again, this is Yaw's, Yaw's laws are, are crazy, amazing stuff. Okay. But if the slayer shall at any time come without the border of the city of his refuge, whether he has fled and the revenger of blood find him without the borders of the city of his refuge and the revenger of blood kill the slayer, he shall not be guilty of blood. Wow. Okay. This is crazy, right? So this is a way that you can legally, in Yaw's laws, murder somebody if these people don't go. Why is this? How is it possible that you're able to kill this guy? Say he accidentally killed a man. He's in the city. He decides he needs to wander out of the city and go get some blueberries or something. And he goes out and grabs some blueberries. And lo and behold, the, the slayer's out there, the, the revenger. Um, but he can kill you and there's nothing to do. What, what, what do we make of this? Um, I guess stay in the city. I mean, the city's built there for it to keep you safe. Um, if you leave, that's on you. You choose your death. How would they... How would they how would they make a living in this city of refuge like this? Uh, I think they'd have to probably be fed or, like, they'd probably be taken care of while they're there. Or maybe they can, like, do some jobs around the city. I don't know. 
jobs around the city. I'm, not, I'm, sure, I'm, not, I'm not sure how often people are actually there, how many times they actually killed somebody. I'm sure, and you have millions of people, I'm sure you can actually kill people pretty easily. Um, it's just a matter of metrics, mathematics. Um, you know, you chop enough trees, you have enough guys out there. At some point, somebody gets lazy or somebody gets tired and turns his head and the axe handle flies off and he just accidentally kills somebody. Um, that's kind of how it happens. Your monger says you better be in good shape if you kill somebody. Yeah, absolutely. You better get the Foot Leather Express on and run for the hills, son. Okay. 28. 28. But he should have remained in the city of his refuge until the death of the high priest but after the death of the high priest, the slayer shall return into the land of his possession. Okay, how does this fix anything? I don't understand this. I don't know. I this high like priest, if this high priest isn't like a high, if he didn't, like, if it hasn't been years and years and years and you sneak back into your city, these people are going to get you. Well, now, what, what happens? Avenger of Blood, how, what yeah. are we going to do with him? Like, right, does I'm, he know that the Cohen Hagdall is dead or is his anger just supposed to pass over when that guy dies? Well, I'd be, if, if it were me and I had a big old, uh, beef against this guy i would be hey how are you i'd be checking in on that that coheen all the time how you doing how you feeling right um are you uh feeling well are you getting old you know things of that nature because you go this guy is on his death's door i got three years and i'm gonna go, go settle some business i'm gonna how do how does so, this how does this work i think that if the revenger of blood kills him after the uh high priest dies then he's also guilty of blood he is also guilty of blood. how do you know that what do you say well uh, because uh he says it's not guilty if he goes out before the high priest dies yeah no he, I, I get that so maybe eli's right maybe uh, anyone else have anything to add to this no but the grand says the slayer is deprived of everything else yes home family etc so when they go to that fat to that refuge they have no contact with their family because they can't leave right but their family would probably send in somebody you probably have visitors it's like a prison it's not a prison it's a uh a voluntary prison right but it's like it's a sanctuary it's a place yeah. that and they would have to have the baddest guards outside that building there's an angry to, people coming off i mean there could door. be a there could be the revenger of blood's cousins right those all those guys i mean there could be a whole tribe that comes after and kills this guy it could get really violent really quickly so they're gonna have to have many guards and many many people that are guarding this city and um it's gonna be very interesting so i guess after the high priest dies um, then the Revenger will be guilty of blood. But prior to this, if Homeboy's out picking up blueberries and the Revenger finds him, it's over. And the Revenger's good. Well, that's on you. Yeah. Okay. So these things shall be for a statute of judgment until you throw out your generations in all your dwellings. Whosoever kills any person, the murderer shall be put to death by the mouth of witnesses, but one witness shall not testify against any person to cause him to die. Okay, very important right there, Two right? witnesses. Two witnesses, right? And so, but this is very interesting. Do we have a commandment here? This would be like stoning the witches, right? This would be like, oh, oh, we should I, kill I, mediums. I kind of wish we had a refuge city so we could take this whole chapter, but... Um, yeah, we don't have cities of refuge, and you can you couldn't do this stuff in today. All the laws of the land but would come and... Definitely, the murderer should be put to death. That should be something definitely, but it can't be put to death without... More than two witnesses. Maybe so if you kill somebody, you should be put to death. Yeah, but you can't. But you have to have two witnesses to be put to death. So maybe yeah, it's like where if somebody hates someone, right? And he's like, "How can I get this dude de- dealt with? How can I get rid of him?" And you uh, bring in and you bring in a fake report to this guy and say this dude killed someone, but there's no witnesses. It doesn't matter. Well, they did that in uh, wasn't it uh, Bale and the Dragon or something or what was that one where they uh, they they went against that woman? Susanna. Oh, Susanna and the Dragon was it? It's just Susanna. Susanna, the uh-huh. book of Susanna. It yeah, was, what it was, was it? Around yeah. Daniel's time. Yeah, around Daniel's time. Tell us the story of that real quick. So basically, there were these two men that, that Susanna was like. I think she was, she was like someone important. I don't exactly remember who exactly she was, but she was someone important in the land. There were like two elders in the. And she land. was holy. Mm-hmm. And there were like two elders in the land, and uh, they were like lusting after her. And but she wouldn't like go with them. So then they put up the they made a false report that she that he had that she had been seen with a young man. So then she was going to be put to death. But then Daniel comes in and uh, they're like, are you just going to uh, accuse this woman and put her to death because of these two witnesses? And then he uh, like separates them and he asks them two separate questions of which tree he saw them under. They both gave him different. Uh, Testimony. So then, he, so then those two got put to death. Yeah, good. And so, yeah, that, that's uh, no false reports. False. Yeah, no false reports. Yeah, no, I doesn't like that. All right, let's continue on. Um, where are we at? I think thirty-one. Is it thirty-one? Yeah. yeah. All right. Moreover, you shall take no satisfaction for the life of a murderer which is guilty of death, but he shall surely be put to death. 
Okay, what does that say? My uh, he says, "Do not accept your ransom for the life of a murderer who deserves to die. They are to be put to death." Oh, okay, so that that basically says that if you have no, a rich uh, family and they're trying to buy off, if you murder somebody in Yah's eyes, dead. you you dead. You dead. Okay, thirty-two. And ye shall take no satisfaction for him that is fled to the city of his refuge, that he should come again to dwell in the land until the death of the priest. So ye do not pollute the land wherein you are, for blood it defiles the land, and land cannot be cleansed of the blood that is shed therein, but by the blood of him that shed it. Defile not therefore the land which ye shall inhabit, wherein I dwell, for, Yah for I, Yahuwah, dwell among the children of Yashrael. Okay, so this takes me to one quick question I have. What? 33 for like command, but good to your thing. Okay, so what, 33, hold it. So let, let's talk about abortions real quick, right? So we have abortions. In fact, not, not just, it's a worldwide death sentence, right? It is every, from, from the break of light to the, to the, in Israel, it's 11.30 p.m. at night. You can go and get an abortion in Israel. Just call in. You don't even make it. It's like a drive-in thing. So every female that has aborted their baby, should they be put to death? Yeah. Absolutely. That's According like, to Yaw's laws. I mean, them and the doctor. And the, the, the doctor for it's sure. It's a multiple murder. Yeah, that, well, so would, would a woman or would the doctor be put to death under Yaw's laws? Both. Both? They both committed murder. But she didn't. She, she allowed it she to She allowed it to happen. She wanted it to happen. So I would say she was the one who, like, made the doctor do it. So, yeah, I would say they both Okay, what to if death. a woman is raped and she still wanted to kill her kid? Is there any kind of justification for this? I mean, you can't really kill a child. I mean, it's not his fault that he was born. It shouldn't be his. It shouldn't. He shouldn't die for it either. Is there any justification if a woman is raped and you kill the child? In the Bible, is you would stone the person that was the rapist. Yeah, and I mean, you would. It you doesn't kill that person. Just instead. because you have a child of somebody that raped you does not make it that person, right? It it makes them a whole other thing. It's how you raise your children is how it's going to be. So I would say, yeah, you're right. You, the women and the doctor should all be killed. Maybe the nurses as well. I, I think the whole abortion should be killed. Well, yeah, I mean, you we'll shouldn't kill. even be working there. Well, I mean, this is what it is. So the world is crazy. All right, Jade, you said there's commandment back in thirty three. Thirty three, yes. Yeah, so don't profane the land where you are for blood. Okay, land. That, okay. So that leads me to another question. Do we add the murder into this one on the commandments and then add this as well? I feel like since we added stone the witches and stuff and we said uh, uh, like the kill the sorcerers. Stuff. We'll have people out there killing people. But yeah, this you, isn't you, what you we got, can You can do that in the land though. We added the witch one so what, what about these? Yeah, but we can't stone the witches either. This is more like the criminal laws again. That needs criminal to laws? This that. is murder. And we don't have, know, the thing is we also don't have cities so of criminal. refuge. We don't have cities of refuge. We don't have the Kohen but, Hagel and the congregation. We but, have none of those. Here's yeah. the thing. If you intern, like for the which is like the a laws that are intentional murder, they should be put to death. In the land, if we were in a holy land and somebody murders, we got to follow the laws to the T. So the, the question for today is on this, trying to get through this and dial this in and make sure we have our P's and Q's and T's signed and I's dotted. Is this a command about murder? Nicole's shaking her head. Kate's shaking I, his head. I don't think it is. Because I feel like it should it, be. If like, It could be like, I don't know, maybe like a separate thing of things in the land if we like make a second sheet of in the land. Because we can't do any of this. We can't go kill someone if they've killed the relative of ours. We oh, can't. you can certainly kill someone. Yeah, but it's not going to go well for us. We're not going to end up... Depends. Like, we're not going to end up, <laughs> we're not gonna end up uh, under the jurisdiction of y'all at that point. We're right. Under the jurisdiction of right. the government. Right, we will be we under, in the government. So is yes or no, or do we do this? Um... I Eli, you're so. not waiting at all. I've heard I'm nothing not out of you. Sure. You're not sure. I got, yeah, I, I got think, one. Yes, Jade's think, over there with me. I, I'd probably, we'd probably be the Avengers of Blood. Yeah. Uh, chat. What do you guys think? <laughs> do you guys feel like this anyone, is a command? Is anyone in there? Yeah. Does anyone that's listening to this, is this a command? Is this something we need to add to our list? I mean, obviously, we should not murder. Um, but the murderers but we, kill on purpose. But we added the killed. witch. Is the thing we added stony witches to this. I thing. mean, that's not, I think and that one probably shouldn't be in there either th because we can't do that today either. So we allow witches to roam about. Or if, or if, hey, we, hey, what if we added those and just put a star to the side of it in the land? Don't do this warning for now. Times. This is for this is for future reference. I think that would be best if we put it in there as a command, but put a star or like two stars next to it saying. Okay, so we should do that with witches. Then. We should any command that we cannot do. We can't kill witches. Well, we, we could absolutely kill okay, witches. We cannot kill witches. Legally. Legally, <laughs> under the government we have now. Right. But, okay. But if we add them to the commands and we put a couple stars by the I think that's a good idea. Okay. And just say, in the land. Okay, good. Okay, so we have a commandment in this that we found. Okay, so one commandment. All right, let's Okay, so I'll add that when we're done with Perfect. everything. All right, so let's hit on 30. The last. Oh, but oh I wait. Do, I do have to say, Fearmonger said that, in fact, oddly enough, the rates of pregnancy are much higher in cases of rape. 
And he also believes that the nurses and everybody involved should be put to death in abortions. Yeah, absolutely. Go fear monger. You, you go, Mon. You go, Barkley. All right. Here we go. 36. And the chief fathers of the families of the children of Gilead. This is the last chapter, guys. This is Numbers. Good. All right. That's it. That's the last chapter of Numbers. And 171 days later, earlier, we began this. So we have one chapter left. I guess we'll have to one throw book. One book left, yeah. We've got 200 days, I think, to do. If we do it one a day, I think. Yeah, we'll, we'll try. I want to try to get through this because our next section is going to be even cooler. And uh, we have two things planned for everybody out there. Um, we're going to start going. I'm, I don't know who I was going to do it today, but I, I'm going to start through Ezra, Nehemiah, and the second Ezra, and the what they call the fourth Ezra here in Sephir. I don't know what it is. But there's four books of Ezra. One is actually Nehemiah. So there's three Ezras and one Nehemiah. We're going to go through all that. We're going to read through that so that we can get into the fourth book of Ezra, which is amazing. And then what we're going to do is we're going to be, be doing the uh, Unknown Commandments of Messiah Yahusha, where we're going to go through Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and we're going to find all the commandments of his that are different than Torah, and we are going to um, add those in so we have both sets. All right. Let's start again. And the chief fathers of the families of the children of Gilad, the sons of Machir, the sons of Manasseh, of the families of the sons of Yosef, came near and spoke unto, spoke before Moshe and before the princes and the, the chief fathers of the children of Yashrael. And they said, Yahuwah commanded my Adonai to give the land for my inheritance by lot to the children of Yashrael. And my Adonai was co commanded by Yahuwah to give the inheritance of Zephlachad, our brothers, unto his daughters. Now, who are we talking about here? We so, gotta do a flashback. Go back a few yeah, chapters. Flashback. We what? had five daughters of the man named Ziphilah had. There was uh, Makla, Tertza, Hogla, and Noah. Uh, and Noah. And How they do you remember that. Oh, they're right here in oh, the book right like, here. Wow, right here. Page. <laughs> um, yeah. And they basically said, "Our father has no relatives, no brothers to give the land to. We don't want to be outed. He was not part of the core. He was not part of the revolution. But he died doing his own thing in the wilderness." Can, we still want a portion of land. Would you give that to us? So he, Moses went to Yahuwah. Moses and Elazar, the priest, and Yahuwah said, they speak right, give them their portion of the land. They both, they all deserve a portion of the land. And basically they made a, a new ruling saying if the person did not have a son or a relative to give it to, it goes to the daughters so that they all have their portions of the land. Yeah, and this certain situation right here, this is the amazing hand of Yah. That if you think it's all is like my way or no way or this way or that way, and it's, it, you're, you're, you're going to go to hell if you don't do it, Yah will listen to his people. He listened to Moshe. He changed his ways. He's listened. He will churn with prayer and change things. So these gals, um, and this is yet another one of those things that, you know, if you would take Brother Shaul, his stuff where women are silent, women don't say anything, they're, they're anything. These five women would have... They, they missed Paul's laws, right? Paul's laws was like keep a woman silent and this and that nature, which are not part of Torah, right? That's Paul, part of Paul's laws. Three, and if they be married to any of the sons of other tribes of the children of Yashrael, then shall their inheritance be taken from the inheritance of our fathers and shall be put to the inheritance of the tribe whereunto they are received. So shall it be taken from the lot of our inheritance. Okay, so if p women from other tribes marry, say, a woman from the tribe of Benjamin marries into the tribe of Reuben, then they're going to become part of the Reubenites. And they will lose that inheritance, they correct? Will, they'll they'll stay yeah. with... Because it's their women, Benjamin. right? Right. And so here we go. And when the jubilee of the children of Yashrael shall be, then shall their inheritance be put unto the inheritance of the tribe whereunto they are received. So shall their inheritance be taken away from the inheritance of the tribe of our fathers. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. So this actually sounded like their inheritance would be moved to the next tribe. Mm -hmm. It goes in the, year, in the year of the Jubilee. Yeah, in the year of the Jubilee. And so if they marry into another tribe, then that inheritance becomes part of that other tribe. So you might right. actually have a house of Reuben inside of the house of, you know, inside of uh, Benjamin right. or something of the sort. All right. What's that? But he doesn't let it happen. But he doesn't let it happen. All right. And when Moshe commanded the children of Yashrael according to the word of Yahuwah, saying... The tribe of the sons of Yosef has said, Well, this is the thing which Yahuwah commands concerning the daughters of Zephlokad, saying, Let them marry to whom they think best. Only to the family of the tribe of their father shall they marry. So they stay in your tribe. Stay in your tribe. So shall not the inheritance of the children of Yashrael remove from the tribe to tribe, for every one of the children of Yashrael shall keep himself to the inheritance of the tribe of his fathers. Okay, we just got that, yeah. So Yah kept his stuff dialed in, right? So this is how... Keep they, confusion. 
out of the land. Well, you wouldn't start uh, having different tri- It would be all over the place, right? Because if you had these five girls here, then there would be another four girls, five girls, and they would all go under the same rule because the, the, the dad would have no boys. And then all of a sudden, the inheritance of people would be all over the place. You would have like five or six people in this. The tribes would be mixed. And so Yah is keeping these tribes separated um, for, I guess, a, a good reason. All right. And every daughter that possesses an inheritance in any tribe of the children of Yashrael shall be a woman unto one of the family of the tribe of her father, that the children of Yashrael may enjoy every man the inheritance of his fathers. Neither shall the inheritance remove from one tribe to another tribe, but every one of the tribes of the children of Yashrael shall keep himself to his own inheritance. Okay, anyone having discussion points on this? Uh, no, basically. Everyone. Basically, he says, keep saying your tribe, marry the people. If you marry with hide your tribe, then you'll always have that inheritance. Right, if you marry outside of it, you're not going to And then Jubilees, yeah, if you, if you go outside of it in Jubilees, it goes back to the, the original people, right? Or somewhere within that tribe. Is that what I'm reading right? right? I think so. I think it goes back. So if you have it, it goes back to, like, Manasseh instead of Saint of Reuben. Does anyone, does anyone have anything other than that? Am I reading this right? I, I think so. Okay. Even as Yahuwah commanded Moshe, so did the daughters of Zephlikad. For Makla, Tursa, and Kogla, and Milka, and Noah, the daughters of Zephlikad, were married unto their father's brother's sons. And they, they were married into the families of the sons of Manasseh, the son of Yosef, and their inheritance remained in the tribe of the family of their father. These are the commandments and the judgments which Yahuwah commanded by the hand of Moshe unto the children of Yashrael in the plains of Moab by the Yardin near Jericho. All right, so I wanted to, to discuss a little bit about this. And, you know, it's very hard. Like, if I wanted to leave you guys with a set of land, if we were back in Babylon, if we were in North America, and I wanted to give you guys an inheritance, I would never ever be able to give you an inheritance because the IRS guy would come and want 5,000 bucks a year because you own property taxes or you have land taxes or you have some kind of taxes. There's absolutely zero way I could ever give you guys some sort of a real inheritance. Whereas we were able to go find another land here and our, our monthly, our yearly taxes are five bucks a year, something of the sort, maybe 50 bucks a year. I don't remember what it was, but it's, it's five bucks a year. Yeah, Nichols says five bucks a year. So here we are, and, and this is Yah's ways of, uh, you, di- you didn't lose your land, right? A lot of things can happen over time, and you lose your land, bad things happen, somebody dies, you have to, you get broke, right? Here you're able to go broke, lend off your house until the Jubilee year, right? Get your money that you need to survive, and then at the end of the Jubilee, you still have your land, you still have your inheritance. So Yah gave these guys extremely good land, and he was extremely smart about this, right? Everything on, on the everything from the exit out of Mitzrayim to where they are right now has been surgical, has been strategic, has been exact. There's no wishy-washy about it. it there's cities where the people who go and murder, imagine Yah setting up a land where you didn't have a city of uh, for people who killed people, right? There would be people out there slaying people everywhere. It would have been a mess. But instead, you have six cities to run to. And the six cities are probably positioned inside of locations that you can, if you're in one part, a remote part, you just run to the closest city, right? And so this is amazing stuff that our creator has done. This is not man-made um, direction because us as men, we would have screwed all this up. We would have totally screwed this up. And our laws... If you look at the laws of the land and the stupid stuff, in North America, you can kill somebody and be out inside of four years, right? Four years. You, nothing happens to you. You don't get anything, but yet you've ended a life and nothing happens to you. You can go out there and end another life. You can go get drunk again and kill off a whole other set of people and just do more years, right? Everything we have in this world is unjust, but everything that our creator has put together is amazing. His legal system is amazing. His ways of judgments are amazing. Everything. So we have a leader that we need to follow. We have somebody that is ab- demands respect. He demands respect because he has not let us down in any way. And if these are the laws of his land, these laws are good laws. I don't see these laws as being bad. I would love to be under a king or under a law like this. If I kill somebody, I I should be killed, right? If I if I if you're in part of abortion clinics, you should be killed. You should be drug outside the city streets and kill them all, right? That's just the way it should be. And we don't have that right now. And so we are lacking goodness in this world. We are lacking any kind of goodness whatsoever. But our creator one day, hopefully all these laws come back into effect. I would hope and, and, and I would love to live under a community like Yah has. It's, it's good. I think Fearmonger says it has order. It has order. Yeah, absolutely. It has complete order. 
All right. Well, that is it for the book of numbers, everyone. That is it for our Shabbat stuff. Um, everybody who's left in the chat, much love to everybody out there. Um, anybody new pop in? Um, Addie popped in and Blessed One, which I think her name was Rachel before or Raquel, maybe. I can't remember. RS. I, I don't know who that yeah, is. Yeah, I'm not familiar with RS, but much love out there, family, and to uh, Barkley and Deb and uh, Mason. And to the Creels, if you guys are out there, the Grand, we love you. You are our um, adopted grandma. We love you very, very much. And we thank you for all of everything that you do for us and everybody that's out there that makes a, you know this this ecclesia amazing, right? And these are this is what the, the, the people of Yah should have. They should have little tiny communities like this where we can help each other. We can love each other. We can, we can dis decipher scriptures and figure this stuff out. Learn from each other. Yeah, learn from each other. And I learn, we learn as much from you guys as hopefully you guys learn from the, the readings and teachings that, that are from scriptures, right? And we're simply parroting what Yah has for us. And I think anybody can do this. So... I guess that's it. Um, much love to everybody out there. Lester and Zachariah. Oh, and RS is Zachariah's wife. Oh, RS is his Zachari beautiful wife. Oh, his beautiful <laughs> wife. Hi, RS. So thank, you, thank you so much for hanging out with Zachariah. We appreciate Zachariah and his comments on there, um, on all our stuff. And, and we really do love you guys. So thank you guys very, very much. May Yahuwah bless you. May he keep you. May he guide you. May he make the Shabbat everything to you guys. May you guys get rest. May no wickedness come against you at all. And may your week be truly blessed with everything. We love you guys. And we thank you guys very, very much. And we will say goodbye. All right. Shalom.